Hello my friends, welcome to Guitar Masterclass 3. I call this one um, Riffology. Why not? I don't know whether, even know whether that word exists, but uh, anyway, that's what I'm calling it. It's going to be the art of the riff, the guitar riff. Um, and as far as you're concerned, it's all about you being able to control your plaque and hitting one string at a time to create some of the most famous riffs in the world. You know, things like... sorts of things which I know you'll have all heard come from one main riff now I did a tutorial um, about this a, a couple of weeks ago called um, the mother of all riffs which you might want to look at which is probably something you've ignored if you're new to playing guitar because you really thought it was too hard for you so we're gonna look at this uh, the technique for doing this today in order that you can join in and get into those uh, those uh, more difficult um, styles but it's one Follow me and it'll be great. Masterclass one, we covered the basics. We did tuning, posture, chord sequence, the strumming patterns. Masterclass two, we I, I was don't do this as in things that you, you do's and you don'ts. That covered chord changes, how to get from one chord to another while making a big mistake and cocking it up halfway through. Plec control, we're gonna to touch on that again today. Strumming whilst changing chord, very important. You know, we looked at that. Um, and we did an intro to guitar finger picking. Um, which is good. Today it's all about this plectrum and it's all about mastering the art of playing the guitar riff. Stick with this and you're gonna have it in no time. Right we're gonna play this. You look, Some of you may have seen this before. This is what I did in the um, mother of all riffs lesson. But we're gonna refer to this again. It's dead easy. We're gonna play this guitar riff at the top. I've done it in tab all right because this is the sort of thing that tablature works really well with. All right, and this is the mother of all riffs here. Well, I've called it on here a boogie bass line because that's really what it is. And here are some examples of uh, permutations of this, of riffs you will all know, which we can get into later. So the first thing we need to do is look at our first, well, just first of all, have a look at this. There's a blue link below this video in the description box. Click on that and you can download this piece of paper here all right so everything that I'm referring to now you can download it it's all free everything on my channel is free all I ask you to do please is to subscribe or press a like button because apparently if you press the like button and, and subscribe it um, it gets more people to see this sort of thing uh, and for all those older viewers watching this subscribe doesn't mean pay for anything it means it's just like join so if it says subscribe you just click a button to join and then if you're fed up with it you just click it again and you won't join subscribe unsubscribe that's all it is all right no money is involved whatsoever so try and do that uh, and then it, what it'll tell you is whenever I put a video up it'll let you know okay so anyway this is what we're gonna do and here's our tab do you know how I use tablature have you ever used tablature before these are your six strings it's not like music this is your bass string down here okay your thick string if you like and you can put this one here is your thin string all right thick string Thin string and these are the names of those strings all right well we're not really interested in that now or all we're interested in what these numbers mean it's like following a dot to dot remember when you had a kid and you joined the dots up this is what this is like so you'll see that on this bass string here we've got a zero and a four and then on the string below it we've got a two and a four dum 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 okay what does that mean it means this all right now I'll refer to this in a minute. What I'm going to do is just want to get you to be able to play it and then we can cross-reference it with the tablature that, that I've just shown you. All right, the first thing you're going to do is put your first finger around the second fret, okay? Fret one, fret two. Any strings that we play in the second fret are going to be played with this first finger here, all right? And for the uh, uh, notes that you're going to play at the fourth fret, you can either use your third finger one, two, three, or you can use your fourth finger, whatever you want, I don't care. Don't use your second though, you know, your third or your fourth, whatever one you find easiest to reach with. In this particular thing, it doesn't matter, all right? Preferably your third, if you can do it, your fourth if you can't, okay? That's that's basically what you need to do. Your plec, you'll hold it as we talked about uh, in the last lesson, like a fan, don't, not like a ball, like a monkey carrying a, an onion okay fanned out like this okay now you'll notice that the first two notes you see or the first two 
numbers that you see are a zero and a four. That's telling you that you'll play the bass string open and then you'll play the bass string at the fourth fret. Then it goes on to the fifth string, which is the fifth string, I can hear you say, well, we count from here, one, two, three, four, five, not the other way around, we always count from here, okay? So I'll do that again, O, as in open, four, fifth string at the second fret where this finger comes into play, two, four, on the fifth string, O, four, two, four, and all downstrokes of this, uh, with this thing on the, with the plec, don't, don't mess around with alternate picking, all downstrokes, okay? And you pin your arm into the top of your guitar and try not to move your arm around so much. Try and let your wrist do most of the work. I tend to clutch onto um, a first string here with my finger when I'm doing this stuff, because I'm not using it, so I'll use it to just keep my hand from wandering around, okay? So let me do this again. O, four, two, four. Then onto your next bar, because there are four beats to the bar, and we've just done four of them. One, two, three, four. Onto your next bar, you'll notice that the fourth string is now open. One, two, three, four. Then back to the fifth string at the fourth fret. And then the fifth string at the second. And then back to the bass string at the fourth. Okay? Da, 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 da. Now, believe it or not, you've covered three quarters of this already just by doing what we've just done. Okay, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna do it again, and then we're just gonna continue. You'll see in a second. Oh, now so in your head, chant this. O, oh, four, two, four, O, oh, four, two, four. The O oh meaning open, and the two meaning the second fret, and the four meaning the fourth fret, okay? Look at your tab while you're doing it, so you can see what string it's referring to. O, oh, four, two, four, O, oh, four, two, four. And then you'll see that we do all that again. O, oh, four, two, four, O, oh, four, two, four. Now above that riff, you'll see the, the chord E. What's that there for? Well, say you've got a guitarist playing with you who wants to play the chords, he can do this. They're the chords that would underpin it, all right? That's what they're for. So we've done four bars of E. Now we're gonna look down at the second line, we'll see we've got two bars of A. And if you look at the numbers, they correspond identically to the to the first one, to an E, except for one thing. We started an open on the fifth string, or sorry, on the sixth string when we played E. When we look at the A, we're gonna play the same pattern again, but we're gonna start on the fifth string here. O, four, two, four, O, four, two, four. So everything we played on E has just been moved down one string. Everything we did, plec, fingers, the lot, just shifted down by one string. O, four, two, four, O, four, two, four. At which point you'll see that it goes back to E for two bars. O, four, two, four, O, four, two, four. So if we put those eight bars together, we've got this. I'll say the numbers as I'm doing it, and you look at my fingers as I'm playing. O, four, two, four, O, four, two, four, and again, O, four, two, four, O, four, two, four, to the A, O, four, two, four, O, four, two, four, back to E, O, four, two, four, O, four, two, four. So far, so good. Then we get to the chord B seventh. All right, now our finger now is gonna play. Now it's important you don't mess this up because it's a bit different to what you've just been doing. Not a lot, but a little bit. You'll see that it says two, four, O, oh, one. Two on the bass string, four on the bass string, open on the fifth string, and then a one on the fifth string. I'll do that again, two, four, O, oh, one. And then with that same finger, bring it along for the next bar where you will play two, O, oh, four, two. So I'll do those two B sevenths. Two, 
four, o, one, two, o, four, two. Dum, 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 dum. I, I didn't do it the same way then, did I? <laughs> do it again. O, so two, four, o, one, two, o, four, two. And then we go back to E again. You'll notice that that bar is the same as the first one. O, four, two, four. And then we have a little turn around on the B seventh, the last um, bar, where we go two, o, four, two. So if I put that together with a little bit of pace, we've got this. E, E, A, A, E, E, B seven, B seven. Now, when you've got the hang of that, which is like more of a sort of traditional rock and roll way of doing it, try doubling up the plaque action, which is more rocky. Um, how do I mean by that? Well, hit each note twice. Oh. It's got more of a drive to it. Once you've got the hang of that and you can do that you can look if you look down the, the bottom uh, below that you'll see it's got some names of some songs you will most definitely know you've got um, Day Tripper oh three four two two oh two four two oh four so uh, two oh two see the fingers you know almost identical to what we've been doing pretty woman <laughs> I must I must remember not to do that crazy train by Ozzy Osbourne the ballad of John and Yoko So we're standing there. Is it that? Sorry. That's it, got it. They're so similar, it's easy to muggle up. Just permutations of the same notes. Revolution. Um, everything Mark Bolden ever did you know all these greats all based around that riff so it's all about the plaque now we're just going to use downstrokes for that now what I'll do now is I'll just put this guitar down for a minute bear with me bear with me let's pick this one up you'll see me playing this one so we'll try it again on this Called, um, a lot of people have been asking about this guitar. It's a Vox Apache. They're quite rare these now. Um, this belongs to a mate of mine. Uh, I bought one and I gave it to my nephew. And um, I, I wanted to. It's the reason they're good. They, they are unique. Look at this. If I press this button. <laughs> Now, once you've learned how to do the riff that we're doing, what we're going to do then is we're going to try and incorporate riffs into, because of course this lesson is called riffology, we're going to incorporate that into um, chords. What do I mean by that? Well, instead of just playing in A like this. <laughs> I'm 
in the chords A, D and E because rock, rock and rock and roll, it's great to play in, in A, D and E. Um, but we want to add more to it, so I'll give it an example. I'll play the A like this. Well, I, I'll go into more detail in the next lesson, but I just want you to give you a taster of what we're going to do next, all right? Starting with the riff today and then incorporating riffs and chords together. So there's a rhythm we can work with. So there's an A. I'm playing it with one finger. Now a D. Flex. Now an E with one finger. Now the riff. Great little guitars these, a Vox Apache. Now clearly, if you haven't got a drum machine in your guitar, which most of you won't have, just put a drum pattern up on YouTube. Go onto YouTube, click in drum beat, 120 beats a minute, and it'll go and you'll just play along as I've just done. All right, let's have a quick recap then. Um, we're gonna play the riff that we just did before with the single notes. See the way I'm hanging on for dear life. I don't want to be moving my arm around, flopping all over the place, all right? Imagine, it, it's a bit like this. Imagine you're writing, I've talked about this the other day, you know, if you want to get accuracy, you've got to keep your fingers right near the point. You don't sort of want to do it like that. Same with the plaque, imagine the plaque, the point of your pen or your pencil, all right? And you've got, and yeah, this is your paper, okay? You've got to be neat, okay? <laughs> like that in front of people we do the father Ted um, we discussed that or I discussed that the other day in my live stream what is doing the father Ted you might ask well for those people that know father Ted oh, I'm not gonna bore you with it go and look at the last live stream we did I'll explain it there right there you have the uh, plaque control and riffology lesson now what now that you've got when, once you've done that go and start looking back at the, le the other lessons that I've done look at the mother of all riffs where it plays, it does that one again. It goes into it more detail. Go into that. Look, start looking at the other stuff that we're doing. On Saturday, we're going to be using Plec Control again. Saturday, if you're watching this in a year's time, I'm talking about the Saturday after this vid. This is a Wednesday, so oh, I wish I hadn't said that. Confused myself. But uh, on Saturday, this Saturday after this vid, I'm going to be looking at Every Breath You Take by the Police, but not done like this. <laughs> too difficult what I'm going to do I'm going to put a capo on at the second fret like this it's using the exact same sort of technique that we've just been doing but we're gonna simplify it it's using exactly the same notes but making it much easier to play I'm not into changing things to make them easier uh, uh, you know as, as you know just for the sake of it if we can make it easy, but keep the same notes and keep the integrity of the guitar piece that we're learning, great, you know, um, especially if you're beginners. So that's what we're gonna do on Saturday. Right, it's getting late. 
and it's time for me to go. Next lesson, remember, the next masterclass lesson will be incorporating the um, riffs that we've been doing with some chords. Now, I'll, I'll explain that as we go along. If you're impatient and you want to have a little look at what that is all about, have a look at some of my vids where, I set, where, where the uh, titles are Sounds Like Two Guitars because that's what I'm doing. I'm playing the rhythm and I'm playing the riffs over the top. So if you want to have a little taste of what's going to come next week, go and have a look at those um, videos. And remember, please subscribe, um, get your mates, share everything you like on my channel, by the way. It's all free. I don't care who, how many people share it around. Don't bother me. Um, thank you for those people that do the super thanks. Very much appreciated. It pays for the tea, the coffee and the biscuits. So thank you for that. Uh, and I shall look forward to seeing you on, um, on Saturday where we'll be doing something a little bit more advanced. But within a week or two, you will be joining those lessons without any problem whatsoever. And on that positive note, I shall love you and leave you and say thank you for joining me. See you next time. Bye bye.